Hello, I'm Entrilisim and welcome to Let's Play Children of a Dead Earth, which is the realistic space combat simulator. Uh, right, so after last time we did, uh, well, poorly, and then we did well, we managed to finish that mission. Let's do the next mission, which is Predatory Opportunism. So, uh, we've destroyed a dangerous enemy ship that is in orbit of an out-of-plane orbit around Mercury, so we have to do a massive inclination change, and there's a space combat going on. So, let's go to the briefing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, we saw a spike in the USTA uh, activity. They diverted the spacecraft to Mercury. It's important for our tactical operations. Blah, 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 blah. They're in a highly inclined orbit. Right, so the Allied craft is an escort carrier, which means we'll be deploying drones. Uh, and the enemy craft is a corvette, which has some decoys, some coil guns, and some rail guns. So, you know, it's actually got rail guns, so it has range. What about our drones? That's a Stinger Drone Launcher itself. I don't know what the drones are actually fitted with. Can I check what the front drones are fitted with? Stinger Drone Launcher. Okay, they, ha they have guns. Uh, right, well that's that's good enough for me. Maybe it's a 33mm. Do you have a 33mm? No! Any with you. Right, so it's 33mm uh, cans that we have. Right, let's begin the mission. By the way, if you're wondering why all spacecraft are like cylinders, it's basically because, well, that's kind of the easiest way to build a spacecraft. It's the smallest surface area you could have to encompass things inside it. Because if you like actually make them like molded to the form, you actually have like a large surface area. It also means that there's like a, a more angle of incidence with any projectile hitting it generally. So it works from any direction. Um, I recommend launching drones. Drones are much smaller than your capital ship. Let's open up your fleet now. Okay, let's go up and up our fleet. Hello. Inspect your fleet. You can launch drones using this button. Uh, your drones are somewhat less delta V than your capital ship. You may want to get your uh, ship closer to the enemy before launching drones. For instance, if you enter into an enemy orbital plane and then launch drones, your drones won't have to spend the Delta V for outplay maneuver. So, Delta V. We haven't mentioned Delta V before in this series. We have mentioned it loads of times in KSP. Delta V is Delta, which is the symbol for change. Uh, v, velocity. So, change in velocity. Change in speed. Um, Delta V basically is a function of your fuel, how much fuel you've got, the weight of your craft, because obviously it takes more to move a bigger craft. And that's pretty much it. And it determines how far you can go. Because in space, everything, like, how far you can go is determined by what velocity you can get to. Because you need a certain velocity to get away from certain planets or to other asteroids or whatever. So, delta V basically means, right, you can go this far. It's a very crude approximation, but without throwing some more stuff on screen, we'll just sit with that. So, feel free to experiment to find a solution that works best for you. Drones, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So, we could just send out our drones now, but they might not have enough Delta V, because they don't have much fuel, um, to actually get to the enemy. So, what we're going to do is get our craft closer. Now, notice how horrifically inclined the enemy's orbit is. Horrifically inclined, like seriously, painfully inclined. Yeah. So, uh, we currently have a pretty circular orbit. They have a, well, it's circular, it's just horrific. And we need to get to meet them. So if we click this button up here, which I had on before, project orbits on selected plane. Now, the plane that I think we've got uh, Mercury is the frame of reference here. Uh, the plane of Mercury, like orbiting around the sun, etc. This is what their orbit looks like from top down. So we can use that as a guide. However, I'm just going to switch to set frame of reference as the Corvette. Remember that worked so well for us last time. I'm going to set up a trajectory. Now this is going to be a little bit fun, but we're going to do our best to try and meet the enemy craft. Okay, maybe not quite that far. Also, look at the Delta V cost. Two times as much as we've actually got. We're just going to abort that, and we're going to do a new one. Uh, right. So we are here. I'm so confused right now. Where would they be? Let's get rid of that. Ah, uh, because they're the frame of reference. Sorry, they're, yeah. 
I was doing it wrong. Because they're the frame of reference, we're not moving. Right. Okay, so if we go to like there, use the radial arm. Oh, these ones with inclination changes are an absolute pain. Okay. There's no points for keeping bonus fuel, so let's just go crazy with our fuel. Okay. A plane change. We're getting closer. Bring the radial in. Plane change again. And if we match orbit here, that uses a lot of delta V, but we will be in that orbit. So we can do it. It's going to be a very expensive mover, but then again, no points for keeping fuel. So let's do it. Hello. Right, we're still catching up. Okay. Now on the same trajectory, Sam. How are they behind us? We don't want to get our carrier close, so what we should do is we should definitely deploy our drones. So we're going to spec the fleet. Uh, let me just double check that we are in the same... Yeah, we are in the same plane. So we're going to go to the Stinger Drone Launcher. And we have 25 rounds, 25 drones. So we're going to just deploy all of them. And look at them. They're going! Little gun at the front, little solar panels at the side. So the reason that we use drones in space rather than using like manned spacecraft for these fighter type things uh, is because, well, you don't actually need to have life support on board or a person. Which means you make them lighter and smaller, which makes them much more fuel efficient and much quicker to dodge and you can have more of them. Uh, it also means that they can pull crazy excessive um, acceleration because, well, we're squishy. We die at certain accelerations. 11 rounds left. Uh, so yeah, basically there's no point in having people in there. You might as well use drones. Okay. We'll speed this up by just going one minute ahead. And then click on here. Drones. Also, because drones in theory can get killed really easily by lasers. Because lasers hit pretty quickly. So we do expect a high amount of deaths. So... I'm not convinced that drones were going to be that effective because lasers can shoot a lot of things. That said, lasers need to retarget. Um, you've got the dodging side to side motion that the lasers have to try and... So it's, it's a little bit iffy about whether lasers will be super effective. I kind of suspect they would be, but we'll see. So right, we need to go higher. If you go to a larger orbit, you're slower, people below you catch up. So we're going to burn... Oh, we need to just change back to um, Mercury's frame of reference. There we go. So run that burn. We're going to center on Mercury. We've kind of lost ourselves. Okay. One more orbit, and we should be good. Now, if we're using missiles, I'd want to have a very, very high velocity impact. We're not using missiles, so I'm kind of okay having a medium velocity impact. If we're using missiles, basically we want to be able to go straight in at them. They'd have limited time to maneuver. It would be brilliant. So, I don't really want to do that because I'm going to be shooting with drones. But I need to get close, so I do want to get a high velocity. So we're going to set up a trajectory. Can we intercept over there? Yeah, we could do an intercept over there, but I want an incredibly fast intercept. So we have a lot of burn in our drones, actually. Look at that. We have 1.4 comps per second, and we have 3.5 in total. We can afford this burn, and this burn basically makes us fall straight down to the planet because we burn off our entire 
orbital velocity. I mean, orbital velocity must be about 1.4 kilometers. We're going to burn that all. And then... We're going to do an intercept. I think that burn must be getting us back on the orbit. I don't want to get on orbit. I just want to go straight to that. So we're going to start this. This is going to be a, a pass at high velocity. So after, if we pass them and actually fully pass them, we're going to have to switch to uh, immediately burning to catch up. But we have the velocity. We could do that. We have the delta V. Ten minutes. Okay, they're actually passing underneath us. Uh, well, let's do intercept. Immediately. We'll still pass them at a very high velocity. There goes most of our delta V, though. Right. Combat. Welcome to our drones. We're currently broadsiding. We're going to get one pass if we do this. So instead we're going to do controlled homing. I did waste a lot of delta V there. In hindsight. Right. Let's close. We could close at full speed, but we burn that delta V and we need a little bit of that. Okay. Broadside. Oh yeah, ripping through them. Damage is fairly minimal, and we're out of Delta V. Hmm. That is a shame. We're taking quite a lot of damage, though. But unfortunately, your weapons are still working. Okay, escort carrier. Let's try and fight this with the escort carrier. It's not the intention of this mission, but since I screwed up with the drones, I think it's a fair bet. Larger orbit. Intercept. Burn it. Right. Full homing. Burn directly towards him. You got this. Change to broadside. Okay, we're firing our railguns. Come on. Give me some fresh hits. Our engine's been destroyed. Incoming transmission. No! Well, they were going to mince us at close range. We knew that. Right, let's try this again. And we're going to go uh, full speed for this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah! And we've got loads of Delta V left. Loads. So we're just going to... We're well, at full speed, because we don't want to spend too long at their range. The flyby in four minutes is way too long. Right. Flyby in one minute. Bring it down to about 40 seconds. Right, broadside. Yes, that's more what I'm talking about. Oh, wow, that was one hell of a spin. Something must have exploded. That is a lot of spin. Right, controlled homing. Okay, broadside again. Here we go. They've taken a lot of damage and it's still operational. That is kind of surprising, I'll be honest. Come on! 
Oh, distance. we've cut them in half. Oh, and that velocity of spinning. Wow. Whoever is in that section, by the way, is completely dead now. Not apart from the fact that it's cut in half, but mostly for the fact that that such pet like the sheer acceleration in that spinning around. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah. Ooh, rating gold. Ooh. Next mission. Challenges. Ah, that's just a tight Delta V budget. Um, we're actually going to skip that one, I think. We'll go to orbital fallout. Defend both a space station and a spacecraft and destroy an aggressive enemy craft. Okay. Um, do 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 do. It seems like US. TA had up's idea. They sent a warship to a um, experimental shipyard on Eros, and we've got a prototype silo ship there, which unfortunately doesn't have any engines, which is a shame. Um, our silo ship, however, is a nuclear armed missile ship, and they have sent themselves a nuclear enabled missile shooter. Okay, so basically, we've both got nuclear submarines in space. Good to know. We don't have any engines, however, so we can't maneuver. Yay! It's going to be a missile-only fight. Right, what do we have? Four Devastator nuclear missile launchers and six Strikers. I wish I knew what those did. I don't. Okay. Uh, enemy craft. They have two Flak missile, two Strike nuclear. Okay, and weapons in use. Um, Devastator. Right. What's the yield? It doesn't say what the yield is. There's only 10 of those as opposed to 50 of those, though. The heat? Holy crap! Look at that! Heat, 352 kilowatts, whereas this is 13.8. Okay. We also have a flak missile launcher. Do we? Or is it the enemy? Nope, we don't have anything that's non nuclear. Right, let's begin the mission. We got this. Incoming transmission. Whenever you've got an enemy that might be posted on the offensive, run the first turn, see what happens. Okay. They've launched 50 flag missiles, and we can't move. This is going to go well. Um, when their missile fleet intercepts you, we can deal with them in combat. Okay. Well, in the meantime, I ain't got time for that. Let's inspect the fleet. Silo ship. Launch me. We've got 120 nuclear missile rep. Wow! 120? We've got 16 devastators, but we've got 120 striker nuclear missiles. You know what? Let's deploy half of them. One, two, three. There we go. 60. Each of those is 20. My god. This is like a nuclear apocalypse waiting to happen. Um, we'll run for one minute. All right, we've got our 60 nuclear missiles. Now we've just got to do an intercept. So let's make the frame of reference the missile Shuna. And then we have to try and get our missiles down there. Yeah, okay. We'll intercept the enemy. If, if that will do it. The problem is, look at that Delta V budget. I don't think that's a high velocity intercept. I think we have to do a high velocity intercept. Remember, with missiles, you want a high velocity so that they can't shoot them down as they come in. Though, that said, Eros is very low gravity. Closer. May have just ruined things. 
Yes, I have. So little, like, look at that. It's two meters per second of delta V. It's nothing. In fact, there's so little delta V involved there. We might as well just go in a straight line. Look at that. We can actually afford to do that. In fact, we can totally afford to do that. <laughs> That's not even half our Delta V budget. This is because Eris is just an asteroid. Right. And then, yes, we would totally want to do a... Intercept. I suspect the intercept is a slowing down intercept. I don't really want to do a slowdown. I want to... If anything, I want to be at super high velocity by the time I get there. I'm going to be traveling so fast. That said, solving this in three dimensions is a pain. Right, we need to go up. Okay. We will be going at a very high velocity. Let's try and make sure we get this perfectly bang on. Right, that looks like we should just enter combat range there. Let's go forwards 10 minutes. Incoming transmission. Uh, enemy missiles incoming. Um, honestly, enemy missiles are fighting our missiles. I'm just going to make them go straight ahead. I don't actually want to hit the enemy missiles, but whatever. Um, I should deploy flares to throw them off. I don't have any flares. This is a missile fleet. I don't think this was meant to happen. Oh, your missiles are actually homing on my missiles. I didn't lose a single one. They must have hit each other trying to hit my missiles. Oh, sweet! I did not know that that could happen. That was awesome. I need to do that more in the future. Yeah, no missiles for you. Um, however, we may have missed our intercept. Actually, no. Right, intercept. Do it. Right, fly by in 12 seconds. If enemy missiles are incoming, you should... You know what? I'll do this without the help. Full homing, full homing, full homing, full homing. Come on. Oh! Oh, look at that! This is why I wanted a high velocity intercept. Their point defense couldn't do anything. They couldn't even dodge. We've ripped huge chunks in them. Oh, this is beautiful. They're still alive though. I don't know how. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, let's talk about nukes in space. And let's also launch. Eight of our nuclear warheads. The Devastator types. So, uh, nukes in space. Why are they not quite as good as on land? Uh, well, because when a nuclear bomb goes off in the atmosphere, you get uh, a shock wave, you get the heat being transferred by convection and conduction, which we talked about previously, did we? No, I don't think we did. Right, there's three ways of transferring heat. Convection, conduction, and radiation. Uh, convection is like hot air moving around your apartment from like, you know, the radiator or something. It's the air that is hot moving. Um, conduction is the atoms of the air bumping into other atoms, which makes them hot because kinetic energy in an atom is basically heat. This is how much it vibrates. Um, I'll set you back to the frame. Oh, it's still the frame reference. Okay. Right. So. What you're left with is radiation, which is when something gets hot enough that it starts to glow. And by the way, everything glows. 
just you can't see it because it's mostly in infrared, which is why infrared cameras can see them glowing. Like if you look at an infrared camera and you look at people, oh, they glow. It's because you radiate heat in the infrared spectrum. There we go. Right. Try and get this up super fast. Um, so in space, you don't have anything but radiation. And the radiation really will mostly be leaving your craft. So the only thing you can get is that impact itself, the shockwave through the enemy craft, the heat into the enemy craft, but a lot of it just gets, like, wasted into space. Now, don't get me wrong, nukes are still great in space, but they're not as good as you might expect if you were, you know, thinking about nukes traditionally. We're not going to come in anywhere near as fast as we did last time on this one, but then again, I think they're dead, so... Look how slow we are compared to last time. Last time we got there in 10 minutes. Okay, let's do intercept. Okay. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to split the fleet. Oh, wait. No, which one? Group units by five. There we go. Disable grouping. Right. Now, nukes that go off can detonate other nukes nearby. And we don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel orders. On all of them. And we're going to get the first one to do a controlled homing. Second one, full homing. Controlled homing. Controlled homing. This way they'll hit like one after the other. Okay, one nuclear missile is down. Another one's down. I can't believe they're taking them out. They looked like they were dead. Are we dead? Full homing. Now. Dodge, dodge, dodge. Dodge. Oh no, they're gonna hit us. They're gonna hit us. They're gonna hit us. Oh no! Oh no, we did it! Incoming transmission. We did it! I don't know how. I have no idea how. But we did it, and we must have hit them. Oh, look at that! I mean, we had a lot more ammo still left. Dear God. Right, well, missiles at high speed uh, intercept velocities seem to be something that works. We should consider that. Okay. Ooh, gold rating. Yes. Right. Well, next we're doing a Lagrange Point Graveyard. Tight time limit, delta V budget, and high gravitation. Rendezvous and uh, rescue craft to disabled craft in Mercury is for the Grenadier Point before it runs out of food. Okay, we'll do that next time. Um, no fight in that one. When's the next fight? Oh, here we go. Precision combat. Fleet combat. Retrograde maneuvering. Out of plane maneuvering. High gra oh, well, this is going to be interesting. Orbital transfer. Ooh. Well, I've been Henry Listen. If you've enjoyed this episode, please remember to like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. But until next time, stay shiny.